When you can't make it to City Hall or the school board meetings, local journalists from Duluth News Tribune will be there to report the facts and get your questions answered. Local news works for you. Stay up to date at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Hello, Northlanders. It's Thursday, May 18th. I'm Wyatt Buckner through Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's a look at today's headlines. Federal prosecutors have charged a man with stealing a pair of Judy Garland's famed ruby slippers from a Grand Rapids museum nearly 18 years ago. A grand jury on Tuesday indicted Terry John Martin, 76, of rural Grand Rapids, in the 2005 heist of the iconic artifacts from the Judy Garland Museum, according to a statement from the U.S. Attorney's Office in North Dakota. Martin is charged with one count of theft of major artwork. No further details were released on the circumstances that led to Martin's indictment, or whether authorities are still pursuing other suspects. The slippers were noticeably taken in the dark of night while on loan to Garland's birthplace museum in August 2005. Shattered glass and a red sequin were all that were left after an emergency exit door window was broken and the slippers glass case was broken. It was later discovered that the museum's alarm system hadn't been set properly to notify a private security firm. They were recovered by the FBI and Grand Rapids Police Department in Minneapolis in July 2018, but the investigation at the time was said to be ongoing and authorities have remained tight-lipped. The slippers are one of four surviving pairs worn by Garland in one of the most famous films of all time. They were insured at the time for $1 million, but federal agents said they are currently appraised at more than $3.5 million. The brazen theft continued to captivate Garland's hometown, the state, and the arts community for 13 years. The police department received tips from around the world, a dive team searched Tioga Mine Pit in 2015, and an anonymous fan offered a $1 million reward for information leading to the slippers' recovery. While Grand Rapids Police long tinkered with the investigation, the FBI said it became involved in 2017 when an extortion attempt was made against the insurance company that now owns the slippers. The agency's FBI division and art crime team executed search warrants in both Minnesota and Florida and recovered the slippers in a sting operation in Minneapolis in July 2018. The FBI said the recovered slippers were sent to the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., where conservators confirmed their authenticity after an extensive examination of the slippers' construction, material, and wear. While filed in Minnesota, the case was assigned in 2018 to federal prosecutors in North Dakota. Authorities have not elaborated on why it was transferred to the neighboring jurisdiction. It was not immediately clear when Martin would make a court appearance or if he had an attorney. A Duluth man was walking home when he was struck by a stray bullet fired by an assailant who he did not know, according to charges filed this week. Authorities said Mikhail Deshone Patton, 36 in Minneapolis, was firing at another man when he instead struck Timothy Stofnecker, 59, a pedestrian on the other side of the street. The victim reportedly took himself to a hospital for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries, which included a bullet fragment that remains in his shoulder. Patton allegedly changed clothes and swapped vehicles before fleeing the area to the Twin Cities, where he was arrested Tuesday. He is facing three felony counts and will likely make his first appearance Thursday in State District Court. The shooting was reported on the 100 block of East 3rd Street around 2.15 p.m. Saturday. Both the shooter and victim had left the scene by the time officers arrived, but the entire incident was captured on surveillance video. The footage reportedly showed Patton and another man, both of whom were known to police, arguing in front of an apartment building. Patton was then seen reaching into a jacket pocket and pulling out an apparent gun, pointing at the other man's feet. The man could be seen flinching and running away as dirt kicked up from the ground when Patton apparently fired. The other man, when located by police, recalled being afraid for his life as he was only four to five feet away from Patton as he fired. That victim, who was not identified in documents, said he had been standing outside when the defendant approached, appearing angry and confronting him. Officers were still searching the area when a dispatcher reported that Stofnecker had walked into the nearby emergency room at Essentia Health St. Mary's Medical Center. An officer went there and wrote that there was a large circular hole in the victim's left bicep. Stofnecker told police he was walking east down 3rd Street when he saw two men arguing on the opposite side. He reported that he stopped near 2nd Avenue East to type a text message and heard gunshots, then felt a pain in his left arm. 
Hospital staff reported that a bullet fragment had traveled to the backside of Stofnecker's shoulder blade and could not be removed. Patson is charged with second-degree assault with a dangerous weapon, possession of a firearm by a felon, and reckless discharge of a firearm. Records show he was transported Wednesday from Anoka County to the St. Louis County Jail, where he remains without bail ahead of his arraignment. David Huckfeldt, artistic director of the Water is Life Festival, announced Wednesday that the event will not take place this year at Bayfront Festival Park. The festival, which benefits environmental nonprofit Honor the Earth, has taken place at Bayfront for years and rose to newfound prominence in 2021. Bon Iver headlined an event that took place amid protests over the construction of Enbridge's Line 3 oil pipeline crossing northern Minnesota. The festival returned last year with headliners Ani DeFranco and Indigo Girls, drawing approximately 4,000 people to the harborside venue. Honor the Earth was in the news this spring when a former employee's 2019 sexual harassment lawsuit led to a judgment of $750,000 against the organization. Winona LaDuke, who founded the organization with Indigo Girls in 1993, subsequently stepped down as the organization's leader. Crystal Tubles, who had co-led Honor the Earth, became the organization's sole executive director. Although Honor the Earth denied wrongdoing in the case, LaDuke made a statement is saying she had personally failed Margaret Campbell. The former employee alleged that she had been harassed by co-worker Michael Dahl and that organization leaders had ignored her complaints. Huckfeld said organizers are already working on the event's return next year. Now here's a look at your forecast, brought to the Superior Telegram's history podcast, Archive Dive. Weather for the Duluth area today, looking at showers and breezy conditions later on in the afternoon. Areas of smoke move into the region as well. Showers and breezy conditions continue tonight. And then for Friday, more showers, but the smoke does move on out. High temperatures in the upper 50s. More sunshine for Saturday, sunny and breezy with highs in the upper 60s. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist Robert Pointer. Thank you to Archive Dive for their support. The Monthly History Podcast, hosted by Superior Telegram reporter Maria Lockwood, dips into the archives of historic events, people, and places around Superior and Douglas County. You can find the latest episode of Archive Dive at superiortelegram.com or wherever you also get this podcast. Reporting for today's episode was done by Tom Olson and Jay Gabler. Thank you for listening to the Luth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day. And we'll see you back here tomorrow.